welcome back to my channel guys so in this video i'm going to show you guys how to draft the patterns for an off shoulder gown with ruffles so you can decide to make your um gown a long gown a short gown an a-line gown whichever one that you want to create and you can decide to make your ruffles bigger or smaller and you know all that you can decide to make yours you know as a mono strap um something and all the rest but the one that really caught my attention was this off shoulder gown this white gown with this ruffle so the seams are quite different so in this video i'm going to show you guys how i drafted the, pat the patterns for this um gown so if you haven't um subscribed to my channel please do so and yeah let's begin so like i said before the seams for this off shoulder gown like they're quite different from your normal straight seam you can decide to use your normal off shoulder you know gown pattern for this it will work out fine but if you zoom in you notice that the seams are curved you know for the top side and the bottom side you have two curved seams towards the left hand side and two curved seams towards the right hand side and all that and also the ruffles along the sleeve area is quite uh, you know bigger than the one along the center front and if we also zoom in towards the back you also notice that it has that curved seam and all that and also the ruffles along the you know sleeve area are quite larger than the ones at the center back and all that so to draft this pattern you're going to um you know draft your basic gown pattern first so like i said you can decide to do your normal off shoulder gown pattern but for this pattern i wanted you know that curved seam so here i have my basic gown pattern with my upper chest line my bust line my waist line my hip line and also my you know full length line and i also went ahead to draw in the neckline and also the armhole line so first off you know we all know that this is an off shoulder gown so we're going to decide how low we want it to be so i decided to work with five inches and just measure that out and square out the line so yeah then at my bust line i went ahead and took my bust span you know divided by two there my bust span divided by two i also did that uh, along my waistline then from our armhole line we're going to try and create you know a princess seam a princess that seam or something so from that um off shoulder line that i have there i went ahead and marked one and a half inches as you can see then i measured half an inch from both sides of that mark and i'm just going to connect it to my bust line using a straight line So you have to go in and you know cover your line later on so because we took out you know one inch that from there at this lower that line we're going to extend it up by one inch so we wouldn't have any you know shortage of fabric when you're sewing this all up or something so i extended the lower that line by one inch and connected it to the arm curve so what i'm going to do now is to create you know the first curve the first curve that this gown has the first curve seam so from this my off shoulder line here i measured out three and a half inches there from the center front and then at my bust line i marked out two inches from the center front then at my waistline i went ahead and marked one inch from the center front line so let me repeat it again three and a half inches up there two inches at my bust line and one inch along my waistline so i'm just going to connect those points with a straight line connecting it from the you know the off shoulder line there to the bust line then to the waistline so the next thing that we're going to do should be um you know taking out the darts from the waistline area before we shape it down to the full length so at my waistline there you know at that my bust span point i took half inches towards you know the left hand side and then i took one inch 
towards the right hand side and then I'm just going to connect it to my bust line so I didn't quite I didn't draw this line up until my bust point because I'll go in later on to you know curve it out you don't want to have a pointed something over there and all the rest so it wasn't looking all that good but you know when I'm cutting it on fabric I'll just make my adjustments so the next thing that we're going to do is to be you know creating that curved shape that it has and so from my hip line i went in and marked two two inches and then i'm just going to connect it from my waistline to my hip line first off i used my dotted lines just to see the way it would look like if it was curved enough and it wasn't for me so i decided to use two and a half inches instead of two inches and then you know made the line again and all that so as you can see we have our first curved seam there and then you're going to slant your ruler and just connect it down to your full length line you can decide to make this as a straight line but i wanted mine to be curved you know the way it was in the picture and all that so the next thing that we're going to do is to um create the darts you know for the lower area but this dart isn't going to be straight and all that it's going to be curved so I went in at my hip line and marked 2 inches because that's the amount that we have around our waistline you know, from the first line towards that, that line we have 2 inches so I'm just marking out 2 inches from the first line that I have because we're just you know making the dust to be slanted and all that it's not going to be straight so I'm just marking 2 inches and I went ahead to just outline it with my marker and I went in here to measure the length of my dart. So initially I wanted it to be about 5 inches. But later on it didn't quite work out. And I had to you know extend it. And all the rest. But yeah. And I also went in here to connect the other points of the dart. Of, um, down to that 5 inch mark that I made. And just connected it down to my hip line. As you can see. So it was at this point that I then took my ruler and you know connected it down to my hip line. You know, you have to slant your ruler and connect the line. So um I noticed here that the curve wasn't really looking that that point wasn't really looking that curved and all that. So I decided to extend the height of the darts downwards. So from this other that point, I just used my dotted lines to extend the darts. So at the end of it all, my dart, my dart length was about 7 inches and the rest. But you shouldn't allow this to reach your, you know, get to your hip, your hip line and all that. So like I said, it ended up being 7 inches or this is and half and all that. So yeah. Then the next thing we're going to be doing is to be imputing, you know, our circumference, our bust circumference. So here I took my bust circumference divided by 4 plus 1 inch because... That's the amount of darts that we have along that armhole area. So at my waistline, I took my waist circumference divided by 4 plus 1.5 inches because that's the amount of darts that you know, I took along my waistline. Then at my hip line, I took my hip circumference divided by 4 and just marked it because there are no darts here at our hip line. We're not going to add any other darts. Um, stuff there any that's you no know, measurement so that's just your hip circumference divided by four so at my hip at my a full length line what i did is whatever measurements i got at my hip line i just removed one and a half inches from it and just kind of just drew it down there at my full length line then i'm just connecting all the points now i didn't draw these marks up until you know the lines because um I, I wanted to go back later in to you know cover out those points and all that So yeah, I didn't add any seam allowances to it to this, any side seam allowance, you know, I didn't add that because I planned on retracing all these patterns out, adding every necessary allowances then. So here we have our center front all cut out, then this our middle seam, I'm just cutting it out as you can see. Cutting out the darts because we don't need that, so this is our middle, you know, pattern and all that, so I'm cutting out the darts. For this area and also the armhole that princess that and all that and 
these are our seams as you can see so i'm going to retrace this out and add my necessary seams um sewing allowances along the dots and our side seam allowance and also our hemming allowance and don't forget to add your allowances at the top you know for turning it with your lining and all that so this was the patterns you know with all my seams my side seam my hemming allowance seam the seams along my dots and all that so moving over to the back i have my back patterns with my bust line upper chest line waistline and i also marked out my zip allowance as you can see along that center back line so we're going to measure out the you know off shoulder that stuff that we did for the front and you know i use five inches for the front so it should be the same for the back too i marked out five inches and just squared out the line so at my waistline i went in and marked two inches as you can see because i'm trying to create those curved seams you know that we had at the back and as my off shoulder point here i marked two inches as well so at my waistline i went in and marked half inches from both sides of that initial line that i made and i'm just going to connect these points up onto you know the top of the off shoulder and all that so using my ruler i went ahead to just drawing the lines we're just creating darts here so instead of your darts being you know at your bust band divided by two measurements um it was like two inches one and a half inches in west or something like that so um, uh, my hip line i went in and marked three inches in was and take note that you know um placing this um we are taking these measurements right from that zip allowance line we're not going in there that line there that separates the zip allowance from you know this main thing that's where i'm taking all these measurements from so the height of my dot i decided it was going to be the same for the front so i went ahead to mark seven inches as the height of the dot you know from downwards and just connected it in a curve to my hip line and all that and then i'm just going to slant my ruler and just connect it to my full length line just slant your ruler a little bit or you can use your measurements and all that you can still measure it out if you want so yeah then the next thing we're going to do is to plan the other seam that this dress has so from the first dot line there i marked out three inches from that first dot line that I made and I just went here to just mark two inches from the that line the initial dot line at the waistline and mark two inches and I'm just going to connect it with a straight line so at my hip line I went in and marked uh, I think two inches or so but later on I decided to change it so I marked um, three inches at my waistline and just connected it you know you can decide whatever measurements you want to use okay that was two inches i marked at my hip line before and it wasn't good it wasn't looking all right so i went ahead to just um, make it two and a half inches and then connected it you know so i'm not going to be using that initial line it's the new you know two and a half inches so yeah then at my full length line, I just went in and marked um, two and a half inches. You can decide to use whatsoever measurements that you want, that works best for you and all that. And from my hip line, I connected it to my full length line using a straight line. So we are done with the making the seams. So at my bust line, I went in here and marked my bust circumference divided by 4. And then you measure the amount of that that you have at this line. So I had about half an inch there. I went ahead to just put it back. You must like put back the, you must put that back. If not, your gown won't turn out to be good and all that. So at my waistline, I went in here to mark my waist circumference divided by 4. And the amount of that I have here is 1 inch. And I went back here to just put it in. So at my hip line, I divided my hip circumference divided by 4 and just put that there. 
there are no darts um, along this area and all that so and then I'm connecting all these points you know using a straight line so like I said before whatever you have uh, your hip line you deduct one and a half inches for that and then mark it at your full length line then you connect it with a straight line so I went in here to you know connect all those points with a curve and then connect it straight up to my upper chest line so here I'm just marking half an inch from the center back line just to you know eliminate zip board or something so I wouldn't have this zip board when I'm done sewing my garments and all that so I marked half an inch from the center front from the center back and connected it down to my hip line and all the way up to that off shoulder point that I have there so I went ahead to cut out these patterns and I'm just going to retrace it out adding my seam allowances at the dart point and along this seam here so I cut out these darts that I have here I'll also add my seam allowance you know my hemming allowance my side seam allowance and also allowance at the top you know at the top of the off shoulder area so these are my three patterns my three seams for the back the zip, zip area the middle area and i just went ahead to cut out that zip bulge um something there so yeah these are the patterns for the back so i'm going to go ahead and add my allowance uh my allowances and all that so this is the patterns with the allowance and all that so to the ruffles for the ruffles you need to measure your round shoulder then you're going to measure from your armhole to the other armhole for your front as you can see and for your back you're going to measure the armhole to the other armhole for the back because you're going to use these measurements to create your ruffles so here i've just written out the measurements that i got from you know measuring myself and all that i have my round shoulder my armhole to armhole for my front and my back which was the same for me so if you add that all up you notice that we have eight inches for our sleeves for each sleeve and all that so if you add 14 inches plus 14 plus the eight and eight inches you're going to have your full round shoulder circumference which was 14 44 inches so um because we are creating ruffles and we're going to create pleats and all that we're going to multiply a uh, round shoulder by three i got 132 inches so you can decide to multiply it by two one by two sorry three four and all that so i wanted to have a separate panel for my front and a separate panel you know for my back and all that so which means that um we are going to divide this 132 inches by 2 so that we will have a panel for the front and a panel for the back and if you do that we are going to have 66 inches for the front and 66 inches for the back you know in width or so length not too sure so like I said we have 66 inches for the front and back and as you all know if we add that all up we'll get 132 inches that we have so the height you know depends on your choice and all that but i'll show you guys how to you know determine that in a bit so drafting out this is six inches on pattern paper is quite like it was quite long and all that so i'll be placing it on a fold you know to create the pattern so if you place this pattern on on a fold if you want to draft out the patterns on a fold you know that you have to divide the 66 inches by two because your pattern paper or your fabric is going to be on the fold so if we have that if we do that we're going to have 30, um 33 inches so we're going to have 33 inches you know for the front on the fold if you open it all up you have your full 66 inches and all that so here i'm just showing you i'm just doing a little demonstration or something like that so you won't get confused if i'm doing it on my main pattern paper and all that so we have 33 inches and all that so remember we multiplied our round shoulder by three and it, since we multiplied around so our round shoulder by three that means our armhole to armhole for the front was multiplied by three 
as well as the back and the sleeves which will give us our full 132 inches so 14 by 3 gives us 42 and 8 by 3 gives us 24 so if we add all this all up you're going to get your full 132 inches so like i said we're placing our pattern on the fold so we're going to divide you know that 42 that we got up there by two because measuring our 66 inches was quite long so what i did what you're going to do if you're measuring it you know like by six inches if you're not doing it on the fold is to get your center front and mark 21 inches from both sides which will give us your full 42 inches but because mine is on the fold from this center front line here i'm going to mark 21 inches so that when you open this all up it's going to give you your armhole to armhole for the front you know times three that 42 inches that we got earlier and we are working on the front pattern now so like i said from the center front you measure out 21 inches and you just mark that down so at this other edge is going to be your sleeve area and like i said the sleeve for that the ruffles along the seam is longer than the ruffles along the center front so i decided that mine was going to be 14 inches so along that area we're going to have 14 inches and then at the center front we'll have 8 inches so from the top you measure out 8 inches and then you're just going to connect it with a curve towards the sleeve area so this is the way your pattern is going to be if it's going to be on the fold and all that so if you open this pattern all up let me just show you guys the way it should look like if you open it all up it should look like this forgive me this just a little demonstration on paper and pen and all that so if you open this all up you're going to have this and as your center front line is there and the rest so it's going to be your full 66 inches so the back is quite easier and all that so i just want to write if you open this all up you have your full 66 inches so for the back what you're going to do is this you're simply going to cut this pattern along that center front line because you're going to be adding your zip allowance along that line so you're just going to cut it open along the center front line and then you're going to add your zip allowance along this area here and along the other area there so that's just it so um, before i forget this um long line up there that's from the top there is you're going to cut this pattern on the fold as you fold over your fabric and cut this so the line up there is going to be on a fold yeah so i went ahead to drop the patterns this pattern was quite long like i said so i decided to put it on a fold like you know i showed you guys earlier so i have my full 66 inches here is on a fold so we have so i'm going to be marking out that 33 inches so from the center front to the side i marked 33 inches like i like i told you guys and then from the center front i marked 21 inches because you know for my armhole to armhole for the front was 14 you know you multiply you multiply that by two you get 42 inches but because your pattern is on fold you have you no know, 21 inches so that's what i marked from the center front to this area here and i went ahead to mark eight inches from my center front line because i told you guys that was the height i wanted my center front to be and for my sleeve for the sleeve area i marked out um 14 inches like i said and then i'm connecting it from the center front to that sleeve area and then i'm going back ahead to add my seam allowance down there because we need you know that for joining it all up and all that and i'm also going to add a side seam you know along this sleeve area so then i'm going to cut this all up So this is what you should have it's quite long so as you can see the center front area is you know 
smaller than the sleeves and all that so on a fold this is how it should look like so like i said for the back what you just do is to cut off this center front line and add your zip allowance at both edges so let me show you guys here again from this area all the way to the other area is 42 inches like i said and this other area is for your sleeves for your sleeve and you're going to join this front pattern to your back pattern this is only for the front so it's quite large because we are going to create the you know ruffles the pleats and all that and i went in here to indicate that this area is going to be cut on a fold so like i said before you fold over your fabric and place this and just cut it so this area on top there this long line of six, six inches is going to be cut on a fold so for your back you have to cut the center front line and add your zip allowance at both sides so that's just it for the ruffles so um yeah okay so here i'm just going to show you guys um all my patterns with the seam allowances so as you can see i added my side seam allowance and i made the mistake of adding just half an inch so when i'm going to cut it on fabric i'll make sure that that side seam allowance is one inch so um as you can see i added my seam allowances all the way around for the middle for the zip area i just added you know at that that area and for the side i added both at the dart and side seam added my hemming allowance and allowance at the top too so that'll be all for the top and as you can see these are my ruffles and all that so if you want to see the full sewing tutorial then subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you get notified on when i post new videos and you know the sewing tutorial for this and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and drop your comments down below and you can also follow me on facebook and instagram at cases signatures so thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys